Today I just wanted to take a quick look at all the airsoft guns I currently use, or I use regularly when I play airsoft, uh, why I got them, how I got them, and why I think they'd all be great airsoft guns if you're in the market for new airsoft guns. So with that said, we'll get right into it, and we're going to start with pistols, since I'm a pistol guy and I like pistols better. <laughs> so we'll start with this guy right in the middle. This is the Elite Force Glock 19 by Umarex. It's my second favorite airsoft gun on the table, it's my favorite airsoft pistol. Um, if you haven't seen my full review on it, it's up here on the card, you can go check it out if you want. Um, it's just a it's a compact frame pistol, so it's about an inch shorter than standard frame pistols like a 1911. Got a metal slide, polymer lower, it has Glock trademarks wherever you'd expect them. Um, also, from shooting both this pistol and a real Glock 19, they're nearly identical in size and weight, which is really nice to see on an airsoft pistol. Uh, it's powered by green gas. There's a fill valve underneath the uh, base plate there. It holds 19 plus one BBs, and it's a really ergonomic airsoft pistol. The finger grooves with my hand very well, in my opinion. Also, what I really like about this pistol, the trigger is really light and crisp. It breaks cleanly and allows for really crisp follow-up shots. Um, I really like this pistol. I got it in May 2018 as a supplement for my older KWC 1911, which I'll talk about in a minute. And this has been my primary airsoft pistol ever since then. It's a really great gun and I like Glock, so that's why I bought this pistol as well. So moving on, let's take a look at the uh, 1911. So this is my KWC 1911 made by Elite Force, uh, same company as the Glock actually. And for those of you guys who don't know, this design of airsoft pistols has actually been around for a long time and they're known to be some of the most durable and well-performing airsoft pistols out of the box. They're CO2 powered and they hold 14 BBs in the magazine and one in the chamber and they get around 340 FPS with 0.2 gram BBs. They're full metal and they have controls identical to real M1911s and they disassemble in the same manner as well. They also are not that expensive, which is a nice feature, especially if you get the softer models, which I've seen go as low as $85 or $90 on some uh, sites. Performance-wise, it's not as accurate or controllable as the Glock 19 in my opinion, but it gets higher muzzle velocity, and, and bench shooting it, it's just as accurate, it's just not as controllable as the Glock, which is why I tend to prefer the Glock more for actual combat. Um, the ergonomics, they're really nice. It's 1911, it's not uncomfortable. I even have some Magpul grips on mine to make it feel a bit better. It's just not as good as the Glock, in my opinion, as well. Basically, I have this gun as a backup to my Glock 19. I got it last year in uh, November, and it works great in the winter because it's CO2 powered. It gets higher pressure gas. It's reliable. I just has it as a secondary for my Glock 19 whenever I need a second pistol. So now I want to show you all the fun pistol that I have. This is a CO2 powered Mac 11 made by Umarex. I got this in May 2016, just as a fun range toy. I think I spent around $50 on it. And it's open bolt. It's got a clear plastic body, it has no hop-up, so this thing is not accurate at all. The bullets just go, the BBs just go and hit the ground. Uh, it's got this ridiculously huge 50-shot magazine, and most importantly, it has full auto. Check this out. I've never chronoed this thing, but it shoots, just by listening to that, over a thousand RPM, comparing it to my M4 or other airsoft things that I've shot. Uh, it's kind of nice, you can see how it works with the plastic or the clear internals. and. Uh, I haven't run this in a game yet, but maybe I will someday. Let me know down in the comments if you guys think it'll be fun. So that's going to include my pistols, now I'm down to the rifles. So we'll start over here on the on my right, and this is my Polar Star JG M4. This is my favorite airsoft gun that I've ever owned. It's got a Polar Star jack inside, and pun intended, this is the closest to a jack of all trades airsoft rifle that I've ever owned or that I've ever seen on a field. The reason I got a HP system for this gun is for two main reasons, reliability and versatility. In terms of reliability, this rifle has one moving part, and that's the reciprocating nozzle inside the Polar Star jack that moves back and forth to chamber and fire your airsoft BBs. I installed the jack about three years ago, and I've put over 50 or 60,000 rounds through this gun, and I've had no failures at all whatsoever. I haven't even taken this thing out and cleaned it, and it's worked completely perfectly. And then regarding versatility, which is the other reason, this is the closest to a completely all-round perfect rifle you can get, in my opinion, as an assault rifle. And that's because you can adjust things through the fire control unit that comes with the Polar Star Jack, or any HPA engine, really. You can adjust things like rate of fire, uh, the amount of air that goes through your nozzle, your burst setting, and you can also adjust the air pressure at your regulator, which changes the muzzle velocity of your gun. So you could run this as a submachine gun, one instant or one game, and then if you want to run it as a sniper rifle or a DMR, which is what I do, you can just adjust your pressure, adjust your burst settings, and you have a, a completely new setup. So right now, I have mine set up as a DMR, so I've locked the FCU in semi-auto, uh, so it's semi 
rather it's safe, semi, and then the auto setting is just semi-automatic. But if I wanted to, I can make that auto shoot up to 100 rounds per second, which is completely insane. I would never run it on a field, but it's a really fun range toy if you guys ever get into HPA. I have an AK-47 length barrel in here, which is 455 millimeters, I believe. And that's why I have the suppressor on here. I can show you really quick. The barrel actually ends almost all the way down the suppressor. And the reason I have the long barrel is just because it lets me use less air to get the same muzzle velocity. Because as HPA players, we have a lower muzzle velocity limit than AEG players. So I figured I might as well use less air while I'm at it and save some air in my tank. Internally, I have a Pro Win hop up chamber, a GMG green bucking with an H nub, and I have a Madbull 6.03 inner barrel. Overall, it's a really versatile uh, weapon system for airsoft. I can get accurate shots about 200 feet average, which is plenty for a DMR setup. And performance wise and ergonomics, the trigger has an extremely high effective rate of fire in semi automatic because all you're doing is toggling the micro switch. There's no reset, there's no mechanical linkage, it's just activating a switch. And that's like to get an extremely fast, effective rate of fire on HPA systems. So now let's move on to the sniper rifles. And while this is still my favorite gun, we'll move on to these three I'm talking about for a minute. So, we'll move on to these. This is my Well MD13. It's the oldest airsoft rifle that I regularly play with. I got it in January 2014, which is exactly six years ago by the time this video drops, for around $100 or $110, and it came with this exact scope. So, which is pretty cool. Externally, it has a lot of AR style furniture. It's got a retractable stock, it has an A2 style pistol grip. Um, internally, it's an APS2 system as opposed to a BSR 10, which I actually prefer because it has 90 degree trigger sears and a TDC style hop up chamber. I go into those in more detail in my full review. You can check that up there. So, the parts I have inside right now I have stock trigger sears, I have a stock cylinder, which is the actual bolt area of the gun, I have a modified piston, Angel Custom Spring Guide. Madbull 6.01 uh, millimeter inner barrel. I just installed an Action Army hop-up chamber with a maple leaf uh, hop-up bucking, which gives it perfect air seal. Although I will say that the stock hop-up chamber, because it's still TDC style, it's still really accurate and you don't really need to upgrade it unless you want 100% air efficiency. And this gun has, oh, it's got an M150 spring inside, which gives it around 500 feet per second with 0.2 gram BBs. In terms of performance, it's really handy. You can customize the length of pull on it really easily. It's also really light, it weighs about 5 pounds, and it's really familiar to anybody who's run an M4 or an AR platform in the past. This is effective at around 80 or 90 yards. It's about almost as effective as the SSG-24, which I'll get into that in a minute, but you guys have all heard of that rifle's awesome performance. You get a lot of good things with this rifle out of the box. You get a durable trigger setup, you get a great hop-up chamber. And if you want a low-cost, easy-to-use, and comfy sniper that's also upgradable, I'd really recommend this gun. Now let's move on to the SSG-24. So this gun, if you guys, if most, for most of you guys, this needs no introduction. You've seen it used by Novrich, Swamp Sniper, and loads of other airsoft YouTubers who are far more adept at sniping than I am. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, this is a fully upgraded APS-2 uh, style sniper rifle based on the modified Mod 24. And it has, APS, like I said, it's got APS-2 style parts inside with the exception of the hop-up chamber because I've cross-compared them with the MD13, and everything except the barrel and hop-up chamber are exactly compatible for those of you guys looking to upgrade these or the APS-2 rifles. I got this rifle last summer as a supplement to this rifle and as a backup to it. This thing's just, it performs excellent out of the box. It's accurate at 90 or 100 yards with 0.4, I use 0.4 minimum gram BBs in these. It's got an M140 spring, so it gets around 500 feet per second. This gun's also extremely light, and it's extremely easy to move around with. You can adjust the stock, and it's easy to mount a sling through your optic rail as well. It's an excellent rifle. I really like running it. It's a lot of fun, and uh, maybe I'll make a review on it at some point. I don't know. But this is my SSG24, and it's a lot of fun to run. And that's it. That's all the guns that I regularly use, either on the field or on the range at home. Uh, my general philosophy when getting airsoft guns is I tend to get as little as possible and I just upgrade them so they perform really well. And that's what I've tried to do with my loadout here. If you're in the market for any of these types of guns, be it sniper rifles, handguns, or assault rifles, I'll leave links to the guns themselves down in the description and also to the parts that I've installed in them in the description so you can find them really easily. Um, that's going to be it for today. As always, my gear recommendation are PTS EPM Midcap magazines, which hold around 150 BBs each and they're really reliable. I run them in my M4. And my music recommendation for today is going to be Purple Rain by Prince.
You can find links for both in the cards up here or in the description down below if you're interested. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.